it's hard to know where to start. The SLS is such a monumental epochal failure at every possible level that at any level it's self-similar a fractal. Now, I really don't want to let you down more about one of the biggest U.S. agencies. However, NASA Launch Tower is another absolute insane disaster. NASA has spent billions of dollars on upgrading this mobile launch tower. The big truss that sits next to the rocket on the launch pad, well, unfortunately, it leans and will only be used for, at most, one flight. Tweaking an existing steel truss is not exactly rocket science. For the same price, you could have 20 Falcon launches, but it would take three years, why, I have no idea, to upgrade the launch tower for SLS Block 1B. Instead, they're building another one for another billion dollars. More pitifully, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson has recently admitted that NASA is stuck as its second mobile launcher is too heavy, years late, and pushing one billion dollars. What the heck? Is this a joke? How did NASA explain this? Human spaceflight should have a decadal survey. Do we wonder why it doesn't? Let's discuss everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. For years, NASA has struggled with ballooning cost of the rocket and spacecraft it wants to use to send astronauts to the moon. Now it has significant problems with an obscure but vital piece of hardware used to transport and launch the rocket, a tower of scaffolding known as Mobile Launcher, or ML. Let's talk about ML-1 first. NASA has greatly exceeded its cost and schedule targets in developing ML-1. The agency's acquisition approach for ML-1, which lacked coordination and competition with design contractors, coupled with immature SLS requirements, resulted in design errors and integration challenges that drove the project's cost increases and schedule delays. Specifically, the ML-1 project experienced numerous design errors during the outfitting of the tower that resulted in cabling and structural conflict, equipment that didn't work as intended, and issues with fabrication of the connections known as umbilicals that provide power, communications, oxygen, and fuel. NASA exacerbated these issues by accepting unproven and untested design from one of the project's contractors and then additionally, immature SLS requirements resulted in integration challenges that also contributed to increased cost and caused schedule delays. As a result of these issues, NASA incurred substantial unplanned cost for a system the agency currently plans to use for three or four missions. What's the result? Remember in April, a stuck vent valve high up on the mobile launcher structure supporting the SLS of NASA's Kennedy Space Center forced NASA to scrub the Artemis I test after fueling began. Too funny, right? Well, listen, we're not going to stop there. After all, the mobile launch tower will have to be replaced after just three missions because NASA plans to use a different version of the SLS, one with a more powerful upper stage that would extend the rocket's height by some 40 feet. And that's for later trips to the moon in its Artemis lunar campaign. The later version of the SLS will be capable of delivering 40% more payload to the lunar surface. Now it's time to enter NASA's ML-2. In the report, NASA Inspector General said that a second version of the mobile launcher would cost $383 million. But according to a scathing new report, the project's already running years behind schedule, the launcher weighs too much, and the whole thing is hundreds of millions of dollars over budget. The new cost estimate for the project, $960 million. For this price, even the richest billionaire in the world, Elon Musk also said, seems pricey. More importantly, as of this spring, NASA had already obligated $435.6 million to the project. However, despite these ample funding awards, as of May, design work for the massive launch tower was still incomplete, Martin reports. In fact, the engineering firm Bechtel does not expect construction to begin till the end of the calendar year 2022 at the earliest. That's a pretty hefty setback, especially considering the ML-2 was meant to be delivered in March 2023, according to NASA's original contract with Bechtel. NASA's already built a mobile launcher for the SLS rocket at a cost of $668.7 million. And that program also suffered enormous cost increases after NASA's Constellation program was canceled, meaning the agency had to redesign the tower to fit a different rocket, the SLS. So what's the reason for this problem? 
The report cites a litany of mistakes by the contractor Bechtel, but doesn't spare NASA from criticism. For example, Martin said that NASA awarded the contract to Bechtel before the specifications for the SLS rocket's upper stage were even finalized. A major upgrade to the rocket will come via a more powerful second stage known as the Exploration Upper Stage, or EUS. This lack of final requirements to accommodate the EUS hindered design of the mobile launch tower, which must power and fuel the rocket on the ground. NASA's explanation for doing this is that it had no choice but to move forward with the tower design and construction to meet a timeline for lunar missions. The first three flights of the Artemis program, culminating in human landers no earlier than 2025, are to fly on the initial variant of the SLS rocket, which has its own separate mobile launch tower. However, beginning with the Artemis IV mission, NASA wants to launch lunar missions on the powerful upgraded version of the SLS rocket which will require the new mobile launch tower. Nominally, the mission was planned for 2026, but realistically, it won't fly before 2027 or 2028 due to delays in the earlier Artemis flights. Nevertheless, NASA pressed for the construction of the second mobile launch tower to be ready for 2026 and asked for design work to be done on the tower before the rocket's final requirements were known. This is likely to result in additional cost pushing the price of the second mobile launch tower above $1 billion. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson expressed his frustration with the ML-2 at a Senate hearing on May 3rd. Because Bechtel underbid on a cost-plus contract in order what appears to get it, he said, they couldn't perform and NASA is stuck. Nelson said at the hearing that while he met with the chief executive of Bechtel, there was little the agency could do about the cost because of the nature of the cost plus contract. There is no way under the contract, since it's a cost plus contract, that we can do anything but eat it, he said, and that's not right. Nelson used the agency's experience with ML2 to advocate for greater use of fixed price contracts. The audit stated that NASA is investigating what parts of the ML2 contract can be converted to a fixed price structure. At this stage, it's just too early to tell what impact these efforts will have on the ML2 project's cost and schedule, the audit stated of overall recovery efforts for the contract. In particular, while converting portions of the ML2 contract to a fixed price would reduce NASA's risk and increase transparency, it's unclear whether Bechtel would agree to the approach, nor if NASA could afford the high cost associated with the contract structure. After all, you gotta wonder, how many times can NASA SLS fly and how many times should it fly? Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.